on this week's episode of Marketing O'Clock. Jess took it to the trolls, not the soundtrack or the movie, but the Instagram bullying trolls and some of the new initiatives coming out from Instagram. We talked about the new Bing News Pub Hub. And Shep got real medieval with voice assistance. And Shep also gave us a riveting Facebook watch-inspired Real Housewives update. And we talked about what Freddie Prince Jr. and Sarah Michelle Geller are up to. Plus live updates of Disney Shanghai Pirates of the Caribbean lines. And we hope you packed your tinfoil hat because Greg has a parallel universe theory to share. All on today's show. Marketing O'Clock is your weekly dose of digital marketing news, a proud part of the Search Engine Journal Podcast Network. We record every week from the Cypress North Studios located in beautiful Buffalo, New York. Tune in to our critically acclaimed Famous Friday News Show for insights, updates, rants, and much more as we cover the full gamut of digital marketing for you. If you want to follow along, just check out our show notes or head over to marketingoclock.com for all of the links from today's articles. And please subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Hey there, I'm Greg Finn. I'm Christine Zernheld. AKA Shep. And I'm Jess Budd. And it is officially Marketing O'Clock. Here on May 15th, 2020. Remember, you can catch our famous Friday news show each and every Friday morning. All your digital marketing news from the week. Powered by the digital marketing community. Join us in the conversation. We are at Marketing O'Clock everywhere. So what's going on, guys? How's lockdown? You hanging in? Yeah, it's fine. Um, we got some freezy pops here this week. I finished my second puzzle of the lockdown. It was a beautiful Thomas Kincaid of a country cabin landscape. And that's wow. about it. That's exciting. Yeah. What about, about you, you guys? Jess? We have been playing this new game that just sort of happened on its own. We have like those bath letters, you know, that babies can stick on the side of the tub. We've just been leaving each other notes and not the baby and I, but my husband and I. And the rules have turned into you can't get rid of letters or swap letters. You just have to use what was in the last thing. And it's evolved into this crazy thing. And it's actually really difficult. It's like a fun brain teaser, but we've been doing okay. Like I was able to spell fiesta today. It was fun. So it's basically like anagrams. Yeah. we. I think it started with like Skater Boy. I think I sent you guys a picture of that. I left that on the toilet. Like it's just stupid, but what else are you going to do with your time? I think that sounds like a good time. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I have some photos. Maybe we can share them with our, our listeners. All right. Who are our sponsors this week, Jess? This week's episode of Marketing O'Clock is brought to you by Ahrefs. And if you're trying to spell that out in your <laughs> toilet, it is A-H-R-E-F-S. <laughs> Nice. Whether you work for a big brand, run your own small business, or do freelance work, getting traffic to your website is always an issue. Ahrefs is an all-in-one SEO tool set that solves that problem. It gives you the tools you need to rank your website in Google and get tons of search traffic. If you want to learn more, you can check out their blog or YouTube channel for step-by-step -step SEO tutorials. And they have a seven-day trial for only seven bucks. Head on over to ahrefs.com, that is A-H-R-E-F-S.com to sign up today. And today's show is also sponsored by Optio. Optio helps Google Ads managers to automate time-consuming manual tasks so they can spend more time on high-level strategy and creative work. Optimize accounts, monitor performance, track budgets, and get alerts when important changes happen. And right now, our listeners can get a six-week free trial of Optio. Go to optio.com forward slash S-E-J. That is S-E-J like the Solar Energy Journal. So <laughs> it's optio.com forward slash S-E-J and you get six full weeks for free. If it was the Solar Energy Journal, I would not be smart enough to read it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't have to be. Optio's got you covered. And thank you to our sponsors this week. We'll dive into a few features that we love about each one of them a little bit later in the show. And lastly, we have another sponsor the e-summit from Search Engine Journal, the virtual conference of 2020. It's occurring Tuesday, June 2nd, 2020, and the price is absolutely free. The agenda is fire. They've got speakers like Martin Split from Google and Handley from Marketing Profs, and there's a lot of goodness from the paid side of things to the organic side of things. There is a lot to love about this show, and the best part, the price. It's free. And if you're one of the first 5,000 people, 
you can get the free networking as well. So you can talk and mingle, digitally mingle, you know, while being socially distant. So head on over to searchenginejournal.com forward slash SEJ dash eSummit for your ticket. And first up in the news, Bing launched their new PubHub this week, which will allow news publishers to submit their content for potential exposure to millions of Windows, Outlook, and Bing users. So basically, this is Bing's version of the Google Publisher Center, but they went with a better name. A is it a better fun. name? Oh, totally. I love it. It's a lot okay. more fun. I mean, I, my, my only gripe is I feel like a few people are going to put that in incorrectly. Like a few vo- a slip of a vowel or a letter or two, and you're gonna go to go to a, a strange destination. I don't think anyone's gonna do that. No. Okay. <laughs> this rhymes. It's obvious. I have more faith in our industry. Good. As long as you don't do that on your Zoom call while you're sharing your screen with your clients. Good. Just make sure you're rhyming then. Pub hub. <laughs> So if you submit your site, you'll be able to reach users who get their news through Bing.com, the Bing app. Do you guys use the Bing app? No. No. Oh, surprise, surprise. Outlook <laughs> users who use the Bing News Connector and that fair maiden Cortana that everyone just loves so much on their Windows desktop. And we're all using her. One one thing I like in life is like you hear that there's – have you ever heard like, like parallel world philosophy where the same thing is happening – and it's happened many, many times to infinity, and we've been here many times, and then at some point something falls off. No, you sound like a crazy person. <laughs> okay, well, I don't know the exact name of it, but it's saying that there are like so many different, different like um, just worlds out there, and they're all the same. I'll have to Google it and throw it in at the it end. It sounds it, like the Matrix, or like Rick and Morty. But there's a philosophy out there like that that this is happening in many other dimensions. And then it's just like different outcomes, but there's like infinite number of, of results or whatever. But when I hear something like that fair maiden Cortana, I realize <laughs> this that's not impossible. Nobody in any dimension anywhere has ever called Cortana <laughs> a fair maiden Cortana like Shep just did on the show. I don't think anybody's ever called her anything. I don't I think she's the least used voice assistant. Right? She's lonely. Poor babe. We need to give Cortana some love. Well, Bing says to be included, your site needs to be newsworthy, so no how-to articles or advice columns or job postings. It needs to have original content. It needs to be authoritative, so you need to accurately cite your sources, and it needs to be readable, NBD. So, yeah, this is – I don't get Bing. Like, today I was trying to explore Bing News a little bit, so I typed something into my desktop search bar where the results come up with Bing, and there is this thing for MSN, like in the Bing News. It's very confusing. I don't know what they're doing over there, but if you want to be a part of Bing News, PubHub is what it's all about. What else is happening this week? <laughs> Next up, we have some new features from Google. Google My Business is launching new ways for businesses to encourage customer support. Google My Business listings will be able to include now a link directly to gift card purchase options on a business's website, which is nice. And through a partnership with PayPal and GoFundMe, businesses will also be able to accept donations from customers directly through their Google My Business page. So these updates are rolling out slowly, and they're only going to be available to certain eligible businesses. It does seem like a lot of them will be eligible, but some won't. So this is all in an effort to prevent misuse of the features. And if you want to know more about those requirements, you can check the link in the show notes. And I'm hoping there's a requirement that you have to ask to be have the GoFundMe fundraiser set up, right? I'm pretty sure. I mean, that wasn't in the list of eligibility, but I think you have to actually set this up. None of that Lady Gaga's father drama is going to happen here. (laughs) (laughs) On the uh, paid side of things, businesses that are running local inventory ads will be able to add a curbside pickup badge to their ads to let customers know that items are available for curbside pickup. What else? And if you're not running ads, don't forget that you can still add a curbside pickup attribute to your Google My Business listing. So Updates for everybody, paid and non. I just, I'm like, I bet Chili's is really salty about this though, because they kind of invented curbside pickup, right? They were doing it before it was cool. Well, they have like all kinds of things. So if you're in the airport or sometimes like on a roadside stop, it'll be called Chili's 2, T O O. Ew. Ooh. More like Chili's Ew. <laughs> Are you kidding? They have the Southwest egg rolls. It's all you need. I'm not even ewing about the food. That's just a dumb name. That doesn't make any sense. I don't Chili's know, also. And to be honest, it's more like Jetway pickup, right? 
Yeah. Like they don't have curbside pickup, but then if you go to a real Chili's, do they call it curbside to go there? I wasn't sure if it was them or Applebee's. To me, they're the same. I don't know. I think Applebee's does for sure. One of them has, and it, actually, I think you're right. I think it's Applebee's and it's like the little apple on wheels. I can picture the thing in my mind. Never mind. Moving on. All right. <clears throat> well, next up. And what I was thinking of before is called the many worlds interpretation. It's a quantum mechanics thing. So if you want to get more information, it's the many worlds interpretation. I'm not looking for more information. <laughs> I can't <laughs> believe we didn't think of that. <laughs> you know what, Shep? Nobody else is either. So the next up is something that people should be looking for. And it's a test from Instagram as they are allowing pinned comments on posts as part of a larger effort to combat bullying and other things on the platform. And so to me, I love this pinned post side of it because Instagram comments are a disaster. They're, it's a heck show in there when you look at the comments. And one of the reasons in my personal professional opinion, and I just happen to be right, is from the wave of comments that have happened from Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk, and his, I think he calls it like his $1.50 content strategy or something where you spend, I don't, I don't know why it's a dollar, maybe a dollar 80, something like that. But he had these videos out there saying, you know, just go comment on people's posts and then people are going to like you, follow you, your audience is going to get bigger. He did say some nice things like, you know, make sure that it's tasteful, but it's like all the good stuff. Nobody listens to the, the minutia of it. And you see people commenting on every celebrity Everybody that has any kind of influence now, because Gary V said it. Gary uh, V wants you, you to crush blame it. Gary B. I'm Gary. blaming him for this. Every one of his videos out there is like, oh, you need to go and you need to post a look at this. Search in your area, find videos in Buffalo, and go post a comment on there. And they're gonna say, look, look nobody's ever commented on this before. And now I'm gonna follow you. And then you just keep doing it. And you keep doing it. There's my 2007 to 2011. It's like. I I'm not his biggest fan, but I don't think he's the reason people comment like KB on Kylie Jenner's Instagram post a million times in a row, personally. That is a strategy that I'm just going off of the most popular social media person in the world that has, is, has shipped this strategy to their audience. And so I love this, that you can pin something above all the spammers just trying to get it, get it, get follows. So if you have something that's meaningful and people are having good comments, you don't get people that just put emoji, 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 emoji on there as a response and then get, <laughs> you know, 10,000 followers from it. Okay. I'll pin all my nice comments from Jess. Yeah. And Jess likewise. Nice comments? Oh yeah. She's always inflating my ego. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's Constantly. nice. It's it's my duty, but she deserves it. And so for all those emoji comments, if you want to, you could pin something above it, but you can also bulk delete or you'll soon be able to bulk delete those comments and even restrict accounts that post negative comments. So that all sounds really great. Users will also have more control over who can tag and mention them in posts and stories. So all this is great. Take that, trolls. Speaking of trolls, this when I was writing this, I was thinking about it. Have you guys seen any of these trolls movies? No. No. No? Okay. Me either. But I was listening to the soundtrack today to the Trolls World Tour, and it's decent. There's some good stuff Wait, on there. you didn't see the movie? No. You were you listening to the soundtrack. the soundtrack. Yeah. What? It came up on Spotify. It was recommended. I don't know why, but it's really good. Like, they did a mashup thing that's like, girls just want to have fun, but they called it Trolls Just Want to Have Good Times. Like, there's so many great things. So I was really into the soundtrack. It was pumping me up when I was doing my notes. And I went and I looked at the trailer and the movie actually looks decent. It's like all these different music genres and things. It's like a musical, I guess. But my the one thing I take umbrage with is that rock and roll is like the bad guy and they're trying to take over. I don't really know. I was watching it like off to the side while I was doing work. But it looks kind of fun and the music's actually really good. And I'm I'm in support of this this Trolls movie, even though I know nothing about it. Again, when I talk about that many worlds interpretation of quantum physics, <laughs> I can't imagine any <laughs> other alternate reality where somebody out there hasn't seen a Trolls movie, is a functioning adult, and is then listening to the entire soundtrack. And their child isn't old enough to ask for it. Just Agreed. did it on her own. Yeah. It, but honestly, though, Shep, I challenge you specifically to check it out. I feel like you would appreciate the soundtrack. Okay. Greg, I don't know about you. I, I, I will not ever <laughs> listen to the soundtrack without watching the movie. Never. 
whatever. I stand alone. It's fine. And moving on, Facebook announced a new set of brand safety controls this week. So advertisers will have better control over ad placements. So the first is publisher whitelist for the audience network. So this will allow advertisers to designate which third-party publisher apps to run ads on. So if you want to opt in to the audience network, you don't necessarily just have to have your ads run amok all over it. You can opt into certain placements, which seems like a cool thing to test possibly. And the next is content whitelist for video. If an advertiser is working with third-party partners, Integral Ad Science, Open Slate, or Zephyr, those partners will be able to, quote, dynamically review and customize suitable videos for in-stream campaigns on Facebook. So if you trust Integral Science, Open Slate, or Zephyr to keep your brand safe, go crazy. They'll do it for you. And the final one is live stream exclusions. So Facebook is testing live stream ads for live stream videos, and advertisers will be able to opt out of this ad placement if they wish, which seems like a good idea for a lot of people. So they also announced delivery reports so advertisers can see the pieces of content their ads were embedded in. So if you're in live videos, you can see which performed well and which didn't. All fun things. Speaking of live video, LinkedIn is adding polls and live video-based events in a focus on more virtual engagement. So the virtual events tool that they have basically lets businesses create and promote events, which they can then broadcast live all on the LinkedIn platform. And they do note that there will be an event feed to generate buzz beforehand, an interactive live stream during the event where people can comment and chat. And then there will be a place to showcase highlights from the stream afterward. So that all sounds great. As far as the polls go, we talked about it a few weeks ago. And at the time, I was really excited. But Guys, you'll be happy to know I have decided that it is stupid. I stand with you now on this because for one thing, I'm clearly not a LinkedIn power user, but I'm still offended that the rollout hasn't hit me yet. I don't have the option to create polls. What about all the business meme polls? <laughs> None. I didn't even see any either. And so this article got me excited because they had a link to a poll and they're like, you can go participate in this one. And it was closed. I couldn't even participate. <laughs> <laughs> we talked after the show last week and we went through the business memes and you guys told me they weren't memes. So can you explain what I mean by when I say business memes? You mean like inspirational quotes? Y yes. Yeah. But like that aren't a lot funny. of them aren't, that aren't funny and aren't real, right? Like a lot of them aren't real. <laughs> I don't know what Wouldn't you mean, mean by they real. real. You know, it's a lot of people saying like, oh, you know, I was sitting at my, my daughter's basketball game the other day and I realized that you know, the nine to five is much more than that. It's, it's <laughs> my livelihood. That but in reality, real. <laughs> no, it's not real. They're just dramatic. <laughs> okay. You know, you know what I mean though, but what would you call them if you want to call them memes? Like I would just call them LinkedIn posts and yep. that I would say that I hate them. Yeah. And it's, it's people fishing for engagement. It's, it's like motivation. So thirsty for engagement. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Do anything. It's not good, but I have I have a funny joke. Do you? <laughs> I couldn't set up. A, <laughs> well, I couldn't set up a poll to see if it was funny, so I'm just going to test it live. Okay. Okay. What do you call a questionnaire on Halloween? A spooky questionnaire. <laughs> <laughs> a poll, Turgeist. Uh, I was very close. I was very close to getting. I was on poll, and I was trying to figure out the answer, but not funny. <laughs> Darn. Okay, Great I job. tried. Now it's time for this week's Take of the Week. This is a hashtag fire digital marketing take with extra spice served up for you. We simply deliver the take for your consumption. We give no opinions. We don't influence. You make the call. And this week's Take of the Week comes from Susan Wanagrad at Susan E. Dub on Twitter. And she says, okay, that's it. I'm crowdsourcing the marketing bro declarations and lies that need to be dismantled. Let's go, people. Line up. Any form of digital marketing is fair game. Paid media, SEO, drop shipping, go. And Susan is looking for the most bro -y marketing content. And she got a lot of it. Well, a couple of my favorites from the tweet were Tim Jensen at Timothy J. Jensen on Twitter saying, I've got a proprietary approach to running ads. And then he said, I have a special connection to Google that other agencies don't have. And we're just talking about like the most bro comments out there. Um, we also had Sam Rucklowitz 
say, insert platform expert with dollar sign XX manage profitability, insert timeline. Like it's, it's kind of like it's a formula that you could do. <laughs> so I thought that was a really good one. Um, John Kagan at John Kagan on Twitter said, we're on Forbes ad council or top 10 SEO agencies. Therefore we're great. Another one that I loved was from Christina Sanders at Christina H. San on Twitter. And she said, I can't teach what I do. It changes too quickly. <laughs> oh my God. Is that the chi- the client <laughs> asking to learn? That's not good. No, it's the marketing bros that are going to try to teach people <laughs> and the, the hooks that they use to get in there. I just saw that our own Mark, who has been on the show many a time here, had chimed in as well. And Mark will read a couple of his. He had a couple of really good ones. So Mark replied to Susan and said, goes live on LinkedIn. Crushing it, fist bump. Another one, I, I love this one from Mark. He said, agency is a dirty word. We're not an agency. <laughs> so if you want to see a lot of bro comments, you can just check out the entire thread. It got so many replies. It is a, a phenomenal thread. Head on over to Marketing O'Clock and you can get the link over to see Susan's tweet there and read all of the responses. Thank you, Susan. And now it's time for this week's I See Why Am I. This is something you just might not have seen. Maybe something that you overlooked, but you shouldn't have. And this week's I See Why Am I comes from Julie F. Bikini at Neptune Moon on Twitter. And Julie was running and participating in this week's PPC chat, hashtag PPC chat on Twitter. And for one of the answers she gave about how to get people to test different items, she had a phenomenal answer. And she said, if you can get a pixel on the site and gather data, it can help make your case too. Cura is a great example of this. Install the pixel on the site and then show client that yes, their audience is there. So if somebody says Facebook's not for me, I'm B2B, my audience isn't on Facebook, put the pixel on there and show people their audience and how you could hit people on Facebook that are visiting the site. Fantastic. Such a good idea. Love it. Hashtag PPC chat. Now it's time for this week's lightning round. Pew, pew. At this point in the show, we split up our content into three parts. Paid, organic, and social. This week's paid lightning round is brought to you by Optio. Optio makes managing Google Ads accounts simple and efficient. It automates time-consuming manual tasks so you can spend more time on strategic or creative work. Our listeners and our listeners only get six weeks for free of Optio. And Optio is an extra set of eyes. It's an extra person on your team. A great, a, a mechanical person. If you listen to, to Joe Rogan talk to Elon Musk on the most recent podcast, we're going to be replaced. We're barely going to be talking soon. And I'm blaming Optio because they have the best software out there. They'll show you when spends went up, when CPCs went up. They will alert you to any changes and try to help you in a way that no other software I've seen can help you. And in times like this, uncertain times, unprecedented times, whatever cliche you want to say, this is six weeks for free. Go sign up for Optio, check it out for yourself, and you will love it. Shep, why do you love Optio? One thing I love about Optio is they make really smart recommendations about when you should raise or lower your keyword bids. And to visualize it, they put it on a chart with other keywords in the same ad group. And the X axis is the amount you spend. And the Y axis is the number of conversions for that keyword. So you can see it plotted against your other keywords and see how performance is. And it's just a different way to look at the data that you can't see in Google Ads. And I find it to be really helpful. And I love it. Thanks, Optio. Weird. Your recommendations aren't just raise bids. Like no, they Google tell you to lower it quite often. Oh, it's like a real recommendation. And if you want to learn more, get that six weeks free trial of Optio. It's optio.com forward slash S E J. That's O P T E O dot com forward slash S E J. And first up in paid this week, we have new Facebook ads wording spotted in the wild by Sir Stephen Johns himself at Stephen Johns 21. So 21, for Dyn- another one. Yeah. So for dynamic creative ads, you can now opt in to quote, optimize creative for each person, optimize with an S because he is in the UK in his example, but 
I would guess that it would say Z here. So this is already an option, but they're giving more information on it now. So Facebook says it will vary creative based on each person's likelihood to respond. And that means that they can apply minor image enhancements, crop the image, apply a template to your creative for your stories, create a stories carousel, create videos from an image, and change the playback speed for videos without sound. And my favorite part about this is that Steven screenshot, he's using one of his actual clients, it's a gin company, and he responds to his own tweet and he says, P.S., if you like gin, then you should try out Absinthe Gym. He just has like a free ad for himself from his client because he's using them as an example. And it's so smart because he's, you know, the PPC spotter in the wild. And next, keeping it with Facebook, they are improving their ad targeting for Facebook Reserve, which is guaranteed ad placements on the Facebook Watch platform. The new offering includes Facebook's native targeting features and location targeting with Nielsen DMA specifications. Facebook Reserve sounds like something that Stephen Johns' uh, client would be selling, don't you think? Oh, yeah. Like, get the, get the 750 milliliter Facebook Reserve. The 1999 vintage. <laughs> so basically, they're trying to make their video content more attractive to tr- traditional TV media buyers, especially now that TV is all screwed up because of coronavirus. And these offerings Wait. are going to get more appetizing for them. TV tested positive? <laughs> <laughs> Why would you wish that upon TV, Greg? I didn't wish it. I was asking a question. I was no, concerned. I tried to do research on it because it was kind of fascinating to me, but it was this big TV media, media buying week this week that they have a couple or a few times a year, and it was canceled for everyone. They like tried to make it virtual. I, I don't know. But this just had me thinking. We don't really talk about Facebook Watch enough on this show. There's a lot of gems there, and I think it's a great place for certain companies to run ads. It's like Discover, but for videos, and you could spend hours. Like today I found a walk through the queue for Pirates of the Caribbean at Shanghai Disneyland. Everything you need need (laughs) to know about Joe Giudice's second cell phone. I mean, of course I'm watching that. Who's Joe Giudice? He is the estranged husband of Teresa Judy Che and they have four daughters together who's just deported to Italy. It's a terrible story, um, but it seems like he wasn't always the best guy and he had two cell phones. Is that the guy married to the woman who was on Celebrity Apprentice? I don't know if Teresa was on Celebrity Apprentice. I don't think so. But she was. She was? She was really good. Well, maybe there's more videos of it on Facebook Watch. Also, well, Sarah Michelle Geller and Freddie Pinch Jr. on why they won't do a rom-com together. You should check Why out your nobody's Facebook hiring blog. them anymore. Yeah, because it's 2020. <laughs> this is a full episode of The Nanny. What are we talking about? What are you talking about? about? <laughs> Facebook Watch. If you go to your Facebook feed along the bottom, there's the notification, the bell, the marketplace button, another great button, and then there's this play button. And you just scroll through. It's like a Discover feed, but it's on Facebook. It's Facebook Watch. And that's what these ads are for. They want the TV people to buy them. And they're like based on what your interests are, and they're really good. They suck you in. Just check it out. I bet more. Yeah, I bet that that whole Zoom call they had instead of the in person thing was like, yeah, how do I get more Judici in my ad budgets? Okay, check it out for yourself and let me know how the welding videos are. Then you can talk. <laughs> it's knife making. <laughs> and finally, we have an update on the organic Google shopping listings front. The PayPal integration that we were promised is now live. So retailers using PayPal as a checkout option can link their accounts to their Google Merchant Center accounts to onboard products for listings across Google. And the best little secret tip with this is that if you're new to Merchant Center, the PayPal connection will speed up the Merchant Center verification process. So if you weren't doing ads, you're just getting onboarded and you have a PayPal account, that's good news for you. What's happening in organic? This week's organic lightning round is brought to you by Ahrefs. And Ahrefs is a phenomenal website tool that shows you everything you need to know about what is happening organically with your site. You can see how links are coming in. They'll send you daily emails, monthly emails. It is a phenomenal tool that will analyze, report, and tell you how to get better for your site. Jess, how to use Ahrefs? 
So last week, Shep mentioned the rank tracker, which if you don't remember or if you weren't listening, is a feature in Ahrefs that tracks your rankings over time and looks at performance versus competitors, which is really cool in and of itself. But if you want to get really wild with it, you can use the SERP features feature in the rank tracker to see specific types of results that are served for a given keyword. So Ahrefs will tell you if your site is ranking in any of those SERP features or just if they exist in the rankings. So you can filter by feature type too. Say if you want to just see which of your keywords shows up in featured snippets, you can. Or maybe you just want to see the shopping results. Boom, you can do that. There's tons you can look at like site links, top stories, ads, people also ask, and so much more. So it's a really nice way to get a sense of what the SERPs look like for a particular term as well as where your own site fits in. It's awesome. And if you want to check it out, Seven days, only seven dollars. Hop in, seven bucks. It's three dollars back on a ten dollar bill. So head on over to ahrefs.com. That's ahrefs.com to sign up today. And you know what? Keep the change, Greg. What's happening in organic this week? Well, first off, Lily Ray over at Path Interactive has five hundred and fifty winners and losers of Google's May 2020 core algorithm update, aka quarantine update. So they used the Systrix US visibility index to analyze a list of 550 domains in looking at it as well with the previous core algorithm updates. Some of the biggest movement and volatility came within the nutrition and recipes sector, fitness, news, drugs, alcohol, and rehab, science and medical, banking and finance, music and entertainment, and natural medicine, and history, which is weird, like going and changing what happened in history. That's just strange. But some of the winners were addictionsandrecovery.org had the highest percentage gains. Another one that was up there was Beachbody on demand. Dot com. Wow. <laughs> so I, you know. I well, mean, that's like just, an at-home workout thing. So great timing for them. Yeah, great timing for for the quarantine update to hit. Another one was marijuana doctors. Dot com. Swimsuit. Si. Dot com. I guess again, a lot of these are pro- probably for people that are home are a blessing. Swimsuit. Dot si. <laughs> Yay. Okay. <laughs> I mean. It's probably better than a, a pubhub.com over there. Um, also, WashingtonPost.com, People.com. And some of the losers were CCN.com, not CNN, <laughs> CCN. It's another news network. A lot of news was were in the top losers. The Federalist.com, NYPost.com, RealClearPolitics.com were some of the top ones that, that were notable. And also Beachbody.com. So I guess Beachbody on Demand saw an influx and Beachbody.com saw a drop. They probably you, stole the traffic from each other. That shouldn't count. <laughs> well, if you want to see everything, all the, the breakdown of the 550 um, listings there, head on over to Path Interactive. We have it in our show notes. And next up, sticking with the quarantine update, a.k.a. the May 2020 core update, uh, Leda Solis has a phenomenal free Google Data Studio report that will help to see you, to see your site if it has any kind of just unusual traffic since the Google algorithm update. It's a free template. You load it in. She's got specific instructions that will let you break down your traffic pre and post update with percentages. It's phenomenal. We had one of our clients, Sarah, um, set it up uh, with with client. It's awesome. So that's really kind of more like a cool tool, but whatever. We have it here. I guess we got two cool tools for you this week. Okay, and our next article comes from not Eastern, not Western, not Northern, but Matt Southern. And this is four new features for video creators on YouTube. And the first one, it's something that we were alerted to eh, about a month and a half ago when we would be able to know when our audiences are online. It was kind of a very purple graph, a chart, diagram, who knows? It's just a purple listing of all the times of the day that our audience was on there. It was just a test. It's now rolled out to 100% of channels. Again, head on over to marketingclock.com to see it in the show notes. And you can also review inappropriate comments. So previously, the option was to hold the comments for review. It's not going to be turned on by default. So instead of you having to turn it on, boom, it's on by default. 
anything that seems questionable, all those Gary V comments that Shep loves, you're going to be able to have those held by default. Next up is scheduling community posts. So you're going to be able to schedule community posts on the desktop web main app. And so this is going to allow creators to draft those community posts ahead of time and specify a future publishing date. If you don't know what a community post is, that is one of the posts that you can interact with viewers using rich media. So that can include polls, just like you love GIFs, and GIFs or, or shop for you GIFs, text, images, and videos. And it gives you more reach on YouTube and a greater engagement with your audience. And there's a community tab that those show up in. You change your pronunciation based on what the other person talking to you says. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, my favorite thing is a new video chapters feature. So let's say we are putting our video here of the show, which isn't really video because we're on lockdown here in New York State. Uh, but let's say we put it up on Search Engine Journal YouTube channel. We can have chapters and say, oh, right now we are in the organic chapter. And the video description needs to have the timestamp on there. It must have at least three chapters. Each chapter has to be at least 10 seconds or longer. No problem for our show. And there's an example from YouTube's video. You can head on over, again, in our show notes to check that out. But you can hop right through to specific sections of a video. And I love this, especially for somebody that just wants to come in and just wants to skip past everything we talked about and get right to Jess and social. This is for them. I love it. Okay, and now it's time for social, Jess. But before we get underway, we have a sponsor this week. That's right. This week's social lightning round is brought to you by the Search Engine Journal eSummit. The eSummit is on June 2nd from 10 a.m. Eastern to 8 p.m. and features a day full of thought leaders, Googlers, and networking. It is looking like it will be the biggest event of 2020 here in the search space. So sign up today, searchenginejournal.com slash SEJ dash eSummit. Or if that was too long for you to understand my jumbled words, you can head over to our show notes to check it out. Greg, what sessions are you most excited for? Well, I have two, and these are my top two that I am interested in, and one from an organic side and one from a paid side. So first on the organic side, Gianluca Ferrelli is talking about SEO for images, and I even like the title. SEO for images, or see what you're missing in your visual search strategy. Um, He talks about the power of images and to find out how to get more and better organic traffic thanks to Google search images search, Google Lens, photo, and assistant. So he is leaving no stone unturned. And from the paid side, it's one of my faves, one of the best people in paid. It's Perna Virgi, and she is from Microsoft and has an amazing name of her session called Advertising for Cavemen, Exploring the Psychology of Ad Copy. And I'm just going to read straight from what Perna has her session about. And she says, What did cavemen care about? Fire? Clubs? Dinosaurs? It's been a bit since prehistoric times, but what hasn't changed are primal drivers that inspire us to take action. As PPCs, we're always trying to answer the question, what appeals to our customers? It turns out the answer is right here in our behavioral history. And after those two, head on over, sign up. You can just go to SEJ searchenginejournal.com. It's right there in the main navigation. Sign up today. The first 5,000 people that sign up for the event and get free networking as well. If you're after the 5,000, you can pay for networking, but it goes to a charity. The whole thing is free. Check it out today. That's searchenginejournal.com forward slash SEJ dash E summit. Jess, what's happening in social this week? All right. First up in social this week, Facebook and Instagram are launching new ways for users to show their support for small businesses. That includes new stickers and hashtags, which is always fun. But more importantly, the platforms are also adding features to actually help boost business as well. So they have a new, quote, businesses nearby, end quote, feature on Facebook that will make it easier for users to discover, interact with, and purchase from local businesses, which is really nice. And the Facebook and Instagram apps are also going to prominently feature COVID-19 information, best practices, and tools on the back end to help businesses act quickly on mobile. I mean, highlighting local businesses is nice, but they already added that wonderful emoji 
of the little hugging guy. So why do they need to do anything else? The hugging heart? Yeah, like a teddy yeah. bear. And it's been, you guys, people have been using it and abusing it. Let me have Really? It. Oh, yeah. You haven't seen it? I refuse to use it because I know that it's about or it's supposed to be for COVID stuff. And I'm that's not the post that I'm liking. No, people just use it for everything. Wait, I thought that was about last minute Valentine's Day gifts that we talked about two weeks ago. Either way. <laughs> it's really <laughs> last minute considering it was like three months ago. <laughs> Okay. Next up, Twitter has a new warning label for tweets that contain, quote, potentially harmful, misleading information, end quote, related to COVID. So the label will display below said tweet, and it says, get the facts about COVID-19. And if you click it, it then links to trusted content that's curated by Twitter. So if they think that something is containing misleading information, they're trying to point users away from it. That's nice. Again, I'd just like to say this is the hardest job on the planet to be that person who is saying this is factual or this is misleading. It's crazy. I love the hardest it. Hardest job on the planet. They should just make it say lie. <laughs> they should but, just have it be like a clip of Mori Povich under the tweet. That is a lie. But the problem the problem is it's just changing every minute. Like how are you going how are you doing this? It's changing every minute. I saw a tweet, I don't know. I, I don't want to get into it again, but it's it's how does anybody know it's real? Like there's not enough data. It's not your problem. It's this person at Twitter and Maury Povich's problem. Just don't worry about it. I agree. Amen. All right. So yesterday, Facebook tried to steal back the service's social video chat growth as it globally is launching Messenger Rooms, its new group video chat service. They're supporting video calls with up to 50 participants with no time limits. And I know everybody's using Zoom. I know Google Meet came out. We talked about it a few weeks back. And and before I even get to my, my joke here... Google Meet is unusable from an audio standpoint. It's like they take your audio and put it through a blender. I was excited that they're like, oh, we have Google Meet. It's this free thing. I don't know what happened to it. It's terrible. But I think this new Messenger Rooms is the chat of the future, mainly because you can initiate calls via everybody's favorite portal device. And the best feature about Google Meet that nobody talks about enough is the nice thing where it tells you who's already on the call before you sign in. So you can be like in limbo until someone else is there. I love that. I definitely do that. I don't join. I don't want to be the first. Totally. It so helps with my social anxiety. And you can fix your hair beforehand. It's like right there. Yeah. You can see whether your camera's on. Like they all need to do that. For sure. But if you want to check out the Facebook version, just zoom over there and check it out. All right, next up, LinkedIn announced that it's adding a new smart links option that tracks who opens links, how long they read the content for, and other detailed engagement metrics, including dwell time, which is pretty cool. And Matt Southern covers it in full along with some new algorithm info over on Search Engine Journal. So you can read his post on that. But all good things. I like more analytics, more information. I have no uh, no issues with that. I don't like the term dwell time. You don't? Dwell time? Like you're dwelling on this, like, like it makes me think that LinkedIn thinks they're a little bit too good. You know, you clicked off of LinkedIn and you're dwelling over here. You know, like, no, sorry, it's your job to deliver people the good stuff. They're not dwelling anywhere; they're consuming good information. Hopefully, yeah. I guess the other thing too is like the only time I ever really hear that word used is like, let's not dwell on that. So it's like a negative, right? Yeah, for sure. I it's think about it as like your home, like we're all, we're. All, in dwelling time right now, it's everyone, you know? <laughs> we can't leave. Yeah. I like the Except Florida, apparently. Oh, yeah. All right. In warm and fuzzy news, the Pinterest business community platform is now open to all users with a business profile. So that's nice. The goal of the community is to share insights and foster conversation among business owners so they can help each other grow, which again, super nice, warm and fuzzy. They have discussion boards, help guides, case studies on successful campaigns and more. It's a really nice offering, honestly. And the look of it is absolutely lovely. I don't know if you guys looked at the screenshots, but they're like, they're pretty. They're not fluffy but they're pretty, they're soothing. And if you think like LinkedIn is kind of a pantsuit around a water cooler, the Pinterest business community is more of like a sundress with a cozy mug of coffee. Still professional, but lovely. It's just, it's very fitting for the platform. I dig it. Why would anybody use Pinterest to communicate like locally? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, this should be Instagram, it should be Twitter. You're like, oh, look at this board. My, my Buffalo board. They're trying so hard with the 
shopping stuff though. So but it's like not a, a local... it's not a local thing though. I don't think this is a local. local thing. I think it's just for any business owners can. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought it was like local. Oh no, community like your oh, business okay. community. Yeah. Well, I take it all back. I love it. I'll, I'll jump on it and say warm and fuzzy again for you, Jess. How Thank you. Good, because I was gonna growl at you or whatever the opposite of warm and fuzzy is. <laughs> All right. TikTok has changed their rules on the commercial use of popular music. So listen up if this applies to you. Previously, the platform was pretty much like a free for all, but now all verified businesses are seeing a warning for tracks that aren't licensed for commercial use. And instead, TikTok wants you to choose from their new commercial music library. Jess, how about that Trolls soundtrack? Is that eligible for commercial (laughs) use or no? I'm guessing not because it's great and they probably have that on lock. But If you want to browse through this commercial music library on TikTok, it's the weirdest thing. The categories of music are like, I'm not kidding you. There's one called Sunset, Unexpected, and Cute. Like, I don't even, what, cute music? That's weird. And I feel like the whole draw of TikTok is that it's not like YouTube or one of those other video platforms where you can't use music. Like, you can use anything. So if this went to the user level, that would be bad. Yeah, it seems like that's not the way that it's going to be going, but I guess we don't really know. But for now, verified businesses definitely can't play with this anymore. The thing that I don't get, like, every time we talk about TikTok, I just feel like I'm from another planet. I know I'm old. I'm not in touch with the youth. We've talked about this. But I don't even understand the words in this article. They referenced interior crocodile alligator. Do you guys know what that is? No, absolutely no. not. Okay, that makes me feel better. Apparently, Can it's I a hear song. It in a sentence? People, um. Oh, I, I don't remember the exact quote, but it was like, oh, can't use interior crocodile alligator. We've got other music for you. I, it's a song, I guess. It's very NSFW. I looked it up and it's not about crocodiles or alligators. People are memeing it, though. I don't I don't get it. I don't I do not ship this. <laughs> you do not ship it? I do not. Is it, is it NSFH? <laughs> well, I get if you're off the clock and not with children around. It's a Nobody's rap at work. song. Yeah. Nobody's at work right now, Jess. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> and that brings us to our real life segment, straight out of our accounts and into your ear holes. It's time for Working Hard or Hardly Working, where we talk about what's going on in our IRL work, good, bad, or otherwise. I will start this week. I have been so annoyed with Zoom this entire quarantine because it's like the Waltons when you sign off and everyone's like, goodbye, Jess, goodbye, Greg, goodbye. You say goodbye a million times. Then you press the button to finally leave the meeting and another pop-up comes up again to ask you to leave again. And it drives me insane that you have to do it twice. Then you're saying goodbye for another five minutes and it increases my social anxiety. Well, what's even more annoying is that Buffer has the opposite problem. When you schedule a tweet, you press this tiny arrow button on the right side of the tweet now button, and some people might not even know it's there at all, which is the whole point of buffer. But if you accidentally press tweet now, it doesn't ask you to confirm that you're tweeting again. It just sends it off. It's far away, and it's terrifying. So they both need to figure it out, like when you're supposed to have a button confirmed twice and when you're not, because they're both doing it wrong. Speaking of doing things wrong, I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I'm one of those people that likes to capitalize every word in titles and headings. I just think it looks nicer, but that's not how you're supposed to do it. And I was helping a client load some content into their blog recently, and I found myself drawing a blank on the right way. So whenever I have a grammar question, I turn to one of two people, Shep or the internet, and I really didn't want to bug Shep over this one because it was embarrassing. And I ended up doing it anyway, but first I found a tool that converts text to title case for you. And we'll put the link in the show notes. It's a really handy bookmark for anyone writing copy. But the real reason I'm bringing it up is because I just want to note that if you Google title case, like 99% of the examples that people use to explain it is the last of the Mohicans, which you guys made fun of me a few weeks ago for referencing. And it's definitely not obscure. People are using it on the internet to teach people things. So, What? What do you mean? That's how you they teach you title case. It's the last are both capitalized and then of the are not and then Mohicans is. So that's what I'm going to use now to remember how title case works. That's not even hard. The hard stuff is like it and is. Well, the last it is Mohicans, I guess we'll have to find that example. When's the last time your husband watched it? That's a real question. Um, I mean, within the last year, which I feel like is a big deal because it's a really old movie. It's from the 90s. 
All right. Well, something working well in my account is integration with clients directly in Slack. Uh, well, it's actually started working poorly, and then I figured out something I had no idea about. And so you, we deal with a lot of clients that are phenomenal. We just brought on an amazing new client, and they are all about Slack. It's phenomenal. And I, we have to set things up right. So we typically say client name dash internal, client name dash our name. And you can see they have like little diamonds next to it. Um, but I didn't know you could make new sections within Slack. And it has saved my life because last week I grabbed the wrong channel by accident and meant to send something internal to, and I sent it to the client. It was just an Asana link that wasn't ready yet, but I did that anyway. And so after that, I made something that was like client included list. So I now have a section in Slack that is client included that I can move up and I have to actually go search for it. And then I have a section that, that groups all of my clients. So that's something that has worked well for me after a little mistake. And hopefully if you use Slack, it'll work well for you. Now it's time for this week's WTH. Misguided. You're like, who does that? <laughs> Just get rid of it. I'm over it. <laughs> Where we rant, rave, and roll our eyes about a trending digital marketing topic. What are we coming to? Honestly. See what had us asking. W-T-H. This week. This week's WTH is an article from Carrie Rose from Rise at 7. And Carrie is talking about GIF SEO. And what's worse is there is a name for this now. They're calling it GEO, or I, I don't know if they're saying GEO. Do you know what, Shep? I know that this wasn't something Gary V wrote because it wasn't Rise at 4 a.m. <laughs> oh, God. Seven's very reasonable. So this is the idea of optimizing your GIF content so it will rank higher on Giphy in particular. And don't tell YouTube, but Carrie says that Giphy is the second largest search engine in the world. I did not know that. <gasps> that that was the biggest WTH I saw. Is it Jiffy, aka Giffy, whatever you call it, Shep, is the second largest search engine? That's crazy. And I don't even understand how really. Like I guess Slack uses it, but on my phone I have some weird other GIF app. It's not Giffy that links into my keyboard, and that's probably all iOS people. So Well, another know. thing is when I when you go to like tweet out a GIF in response to somebody it goes to Jiffy and it uses the Jiffy engine and it kind of stinks into what it brings in. I use the Google keyboard. You can hit the emoji button and then go to GIF and you get way better GIFs. Yeah, I don't have great ones on mine. I don't know. Slack usually does an okay job and I like that you can rotate and pick another one. Anyway, I just want to say a little disclaimer. Carrie is not totally delusional that this is everyone's number one priority. She says at the end of the article, if you're questioning whether you should spend your valuable time and effort on optimizing GIF content, then it's probably not for you yet. But then in the first paragraph, she says, GIF SEO is a thing. Misguided GIF content has received 2.1 billion views and Gymshark receiving 125 million because of this. I, I am assuming her sentence made more sense and I copied and pasted it weird, but that's what I have here. And this just immediately turned me off because misguided is this like, have you guys heard of it? <laughs> no. It's this like ASOS like brand like I see ads for it all the time and it looks like an ASOS and I bought something from there once and I do not understand how they do business like it was a shirt and the hole in the top of the shirt did not fit over my head and I have I think I have a normal sized head. That's a feature not a bug chap. <laughs> there was no zipper or anything it was just mess like who would have fit a baby doll I like brought it into work when I got it and showed it to everyone because it was just absurd to me anyway I get the brand awareness matters but like so what if your gift ranks number one I just <laughs> I don't get what the big deal is like it doesn't link to your website or anything and it's basically good marketing for the real housewives and nobody else in my opinion plus they're usually user generated content what UGC that's what what is a G in UGC it's user generated, not user GIF content. Oh, not user generated, Shep? You sure? <laughs> oh, get same. out of here. First of all, I think I change my pronunciation from time to time, and you always just flip to whatever I'm not saying. I'm on to you. Okay, so here are her guidelines for GIF optimization, if anyone cares. Giphy doesn't differentiate between compound words or phrases at this time. So single words only in your tag for your GIF, which is crazy to me. 
If a GIF includes a text caption within its looping video clip, the GIF search engine will pick up on this information and determine that this GIF is related to whatever words are in the caption. So that's good. And if you're misguided and you want to optimize your GIF SEO, go crazy. Talk to Carrie. I don't think it's that important. All right. Now it's time for the grab bag segments. The segment segments. And we only have one this week. And it's called Burn Your Slacks. Burn the slacks, folks. Because Twitter has announced that employees will be allowed to work at home forever. And a funny thing is, if you go to shopping.google.com, again, they used to not be at all organic. It was just an ad repository. And now they've got work at home attire where they show a button down shirt on top, sweats on the bottom, and cracks on your feet or slippers or something like that. But if you're Twitter, burn the slacks, or if you're nicer, donate the slacks to people that can use them, folks. I feel like the real question here, though, is were Twitter employees wearing slacks in the first place? They, they feel like they have a lax dress code, right? They could wear jeans to work. Lax on slacks? <laughs> lax on slacks on slacks. And now for this week's Cool Tool. As a reminder, our Cool Tool segment is not an official endorsement or paid mention. We're simply sharing something we found in our travels that may be of use to our listeners and is really, really cool. This week's cool tool is the SEO meta tag generator from Hall Analysis. It's an easy- Joe Hall. Joe Hall on Twitter, at Joe Hall. At Joe Hall. Good follow. It's an easy to use tool that generates common meta tags for you based on your answers to simple questions like, should this page be shown in the search results? It's that easy. You can even indicate which search engine your robot directives should apply to if you've got specific needs. My personal favorite thing about the tool is that all you need to make a canonical URL tag is the URL itself. The generator then does the rest, which is super handy because I have to look that up every time I recommend it to somebody, adding it in, and now I don't have to. So when you're done, you just copy the code that the tool generates for you and pass it along to your developers, your client, whoever you're making the recommendation to. It's simple, it's fast, and it's free. Definitely worth a bookmark. So head on over to hallanalysis.com slash SEO dash meta dash tag dash generator and check it out and go follow at joe hall on twitter great guy salt of the earth wait do you ever notice that salty means bad and salt of the earth means good yeah why is that is it because it's hard to get salt like it's rare he's the good one he's the good one for sure now it's time for our must read marketing article of the week an article so advanced so in-depth so detailed that we simply cannot cover it in its entirety on today's show. And this week's must-read marketing article of the week comes from Shop. Hey, I know that person. Over on cypressnorth.com, our agency. And we do a ton of B2B marketing. And we decided, after many questions from our clients, our wonderful clients, what some of the biggest challenges were. We made a guide, a really in-depth, detailed guide. Shep, what are there, like nine or ten chapters in there? Yeah, ten at least. There's a lot. It's a doozy. My favorite is in chapter nine. It shows our funnel analysis we put in our proposals that work really, really well in showing how do we hit ROI at a certain level. And it's a phenomenal article. It is completely free. Just click on through on our show notes over at marketingaclock.com. Completely free. Please download it. Let us know what you think. Tweet at us at Marketing and Clock or at Cypress North on Twitter and let us know if you got value from it. Completely free, 10 chapters, and you, everybody loves Shop. You're going to love this. <laughs> All right. That does it for today's show. Thank you to our phenomenal sponsors. That's Ahrefs, A-H-R-E-F-S dot com and Optio and the S-E-J-E Summit. And if you're looking for another great podcast, don't miss this week's episode of the Search Engine Journal Show. And this week, Brent has Hamlet Batista. And Hamlet talks about automation, how to automate your SEO, and is it worth it to use Python? If you love this, also check out our blog. Our Sarah Burke writes Python articles once a month. Phenomenal. And Hamlet has some of the best Python articles on SEJ, so you know it's going to be great. It is now officially not marketing o'clock. Remember, you can catch everything from this show on marketingaclock.com. While you're there, please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And we will see you next week. Thanks for listening to Marketing O'Clock. If today's show was of value to you, please subscribe, leave a review, or share with a colleague. If you are looking for more information on today's topics, head over to marketingaclock.com for links to all the articles that we covered.